What is going on, folks? I am Goat, and welcome back to Warframe. I feel like ass, and we're covering Varuna the Paragale and the Seraphang. And I'm going to just specifically state we are loosely covering the Seraphang because it's statistically a piece of shit. I'm sorry. The, the truth of it is, is like, I personally find that something like Varuna, with all the hype behind Varuna, right? A set of claws. Like... Something like the Vanka or the Vanka Prime, you know, some, you know, a claw style weapon or God forbid, I know that they're coming later around the Daviri time, but a set of two handed Nakanas would have been a perfect thing to introduce with a melee based frame. Call me fucking insane on this one, but hey, man, what the fuck do I know? Something new or something more fitting to the frame, I think would have been so much better than a nerf to bejesus. Matter eye polarity stance heavy blade. The stats on it are just garbo. It's a heavy blade. The stance that they gave it is poop. And it doesn't even look as cool as it did in the initial renderings anyway. Like, this thing can just be mastery fodder. And the beauty is, is it's very easy to farm on uh, Lua. It's rotation A and B drops. So, I mean, it's not hard to get. It's a fucking handle. It's a blade. It's a blueprint. Boom. Get the thing and just fodder it out because honestly, you're going to do better with the war sword with, you know, I mean, Christ, pretty much every other heavy blade in this game has got better stats. Hell, the fucking Masseter has got better stats in this damn thing. Just throwing it out there. So it is what it is. I mean, if you don't agree, that's fine. If you have a better build, that's fine. But yeah, like, I mean, I didn't do anything crazy. I didn't even drop form on this motherfucker. My specific stance has always been this. Okay, aside from a few, a select few particular weapons, if you have to go so far as to put a stance form onto a melee weapon, it's not worth it. There are a few weapons that do kind of pop out of that criteria. Okay, something like the Cronin Prime. There is a better stance to be put on the Cronin Prime to be used as a stat stick, but that's the point, is that it's an amazing stat stick weapon, but it works better with a different stance on it. So that's one of those times when using a stance forma is, a, is an okay time, you know? I mean, if the fighting style in itself just doesn't fit what you like, you know, like... um stabs or staves in this game there's quite a few of them that just fight funky and there are better stances that you can put on so like the torpedo prime you look like you you know you like you got half your brain cells when you're fighting with that thing but if you do a stance form on it although it's not worth it it at least fights better it fights a little bit more like a pole arm and less like you're just trying to whack motherfuckers with the long ass flies water this particular weapon is statistically garbage I mean, the fact that I've got three 60-60s on this center, I'm, yeah, I've got I've got a 60-90 Carnus Mandible, and then two 60-60s on this thing, and it's still pegging out at a whopping 56% status. You know, like, I could take everything off. Okay, everything. Let's just, let's be real, okay? Sacrificial pressure. Let's get the absolute most. 75% crit. You know, and then Gladiator Might. And Organ Shatter. So you can get a 75 crit with a 5 times multiplier. That's just as good as she gets. That is trash, okay? Like, either buff the weapon or just basically tell us on stream that it's, it's literally a Garbo fucking weapon and it's pure mastery fodder. But hey, it's a signature weapon, right? It's a signature weapon. <clears throat> Heavy attack creates a vortex that pulls in lifted enemies when the Seraphang's combo multiplier builds to a eight times. In Varuna's hands, the Seraphang only requires a five combo multiplier to summon the vortex. Herein lies the problem. Heavy attacks for most weapons, first of all, completely negates out your... Um, combination so unless you're running her third passive constantly which i wouldn't do or unless you're built for heavy attack efficiency that's a completely useless function power slamming just doesn't kill 
It just doesn't. So, I mean, this is literally meant to CC enemies in a game that has literally nerfed out the ability to CC any of the mini boss style enemies. So, okay, cool. So if you power slam, you can literally CC enemies into a vortex that are the trash mobs that you could kill with literally any other crap ass weapon. Sorry to sound ranty about the, about this, but I have not been a fan of them using a heavy blade style weapon as their new release cool thing. And the best thing it does is a CC ability killing your combination. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I find it funny. So is a big whiff, in my personal opinion, massive whiff with the Seraphang. But they did shine quite well with the Paragale, at least. Now, this is just my specific build. I have one, one whopping Forma. <clears throat> I will be putting more Forma into this. And yeah, you see fast hands on here. The only thing that I find to be a little craptacular about the Paragale, and I don't usually say this, but when it comes to something like a burst sniper rifle, uh, one would think that that's something that would have a fast-ass fucking reload, considering it only has a fucking magazine size of 12, and it's popping off four rounds at a time. So you basically get... It's three rounds or four rounds, so you either get three or four shots before you, before you have to reload. And considering that the third ability is based off of getting headshots quickly to get energy... <laughs> 2.3 seconds is a lifetime for this for this particular frame. I mean, just just for example, okay? Just for example, let's go look at the... For Christ's sake, if I could just hit the damn thing. The Rubico Prime. Reload time, 1.5 seconds. That's with the exact same arcane, everything. No, not the same arcane here. Hold on. Hold on. I want to be 100% correct. 1.9 seconds. Okay, so if you do run Merciless, which, again, <clears throat> running Merciless with something like this is not really going to do you the, the best justice. Something like Primary Deadhead is really going to be your best buddy. I mean, on a precision headshot kill, plus 120% damage for 24 seconds. Stacks up to three times. You get it. 30% increase to your headshot multiplier and a minus 50% or a minus 50% recoil. It's this thing was made for sniper rifles, just like it was made for precision style, you know, uh, secondaries. The deadhead arcanes are a hundred percent meant for precision style headshot weapons being sniper rifles and something like the latum and things like that. <clears throat> but this is just personally what has really, really been a punchy son of a bitch for me. This thing just fucking annihilates. A 3.2 punch through with this gun is absolutely brutal. Okay. Yes, I have fast hands on there. That's weird. But I'm trying to make up for basically the lack of being able to use primary merciless instead. So got to give up something somewhere. Now, if, if, if I didn't want to do that. Right. Let's just say I didn't want to do that. And then I wanted to go to with something like, let's say a uh, heat viral. All right. Let's say I wanted to go with the heat viral. Three seconds flat. Three seconds to reload a sniper rifle, guys. That is rough. And like the only thing that you get is obviously the heat proc, which is good. But you're not. I mean, at a 57 percent, there is no fucking way that you're going to be popping out. You know, you're going to be popping out dramatic procs aside from, you know, the in-game functions of getting, you know, buffed from headshots. Overall, I mean, aside from the reload time, the Paragale is a, is a fucking win of a weapon. We'll show you. I mean, this thing is just brutal. If you should happen to get a conga line of enemies that are running at you, uh, this is game over. At least for that conga line. So here we are at Varuna, right? Now, I will say, I've already shot this video once, and I'm now reshooting the video with a different build. And the reason being, and it's not, a, it's not dramatically different, but I'm reshooting this with a different build. And the reason behind it is very simple. They already buffed her fourth ability. Is it enough to make Ulfren's Descent amazing? It's better. Definitely not amazing. 
but it's better. But I have three separate builds that are functional. And I can tell you this, she is definitely not my playstyle. She's such a cool setup with just a couple of minor missed opportunities. And you know what? I'm not a game designer, so I'm not sitting here trying to preach that I know what the every little thing that I'm fucking talking about. And I'm not here to, you know, be a game designer and start throwing ideas out to what the fuck I think will make her better. But that's up to the game. I just play them. So first of all, they already kind of killed the ability because the heads look different. The frame itself looks a little different, except of course you got to have that ass because we always got to do that, right? We got to have that, you know, we got to have the, I'll have them titties. I'll have them titties and ass. That's, I mean, we just got to have that. But the overall look of Aruna, I'm just not a fan of. I will say this, the shoulders and the hips, the heads on there, I, I think they're completely unnecessary. I understand why they're there, because every time you activate a passive, one of them flies off and starts orbiting you like you just became Dom DeLuise and you have your own gravitational pull. Um, but, I mean, the, the basic function of Varuna is very interesting. You have to understand any of the green numbers are based off of the build that's presently on. <clears throat> so, Dinar. Okay, Shroud of Dinar. The passive is you increase your parkour velocity. Now, if you're trying to just get through missions very fucking quickly, yes. Fucking yes. Okay, very much so, yes. The fact that she's got a critical multiplier in there. Yes. That's from the ability side, by the way. The passive is just simple parkour velocity. As it reads out, Dinar shrouds Varuna, basically an invisibility function, and accelerates her speed. Invisibility ends when Varuna attacks. For a short time after the melee attack lands, melee attacks have an increased critical chance and uh, critical damage and status chance to inflict bleed. That is great. Base slash right from the get. Melee kill an enemy during this time to extend the melee buff. So basically you get an additional slash proc in here that you can extend doing more melee kills. Already a fan of that, okay? Is it the most functional? No, but is it a pretty fucking good ability? Considering her playstyle, oh, fuck yes it is. Fangs of Roshk. I'm assuming that's how you pronounce that. I'm bad with some of the names. Some of the names in this game are interesting, okay? So the Rosh guards Varuna with status effect resistance. Herein lies my problem. If you can give status immunity to Titania, just give status immunity to fucking Varuna, okay? Because her survivability is a little intriguing, to say the least. Okay, the fact that when we get to my build, you're going to see exactly why. Because I have not done an aura forma on her. I've only literally done one goddamn forma on this frame. Because I knew the changes were coming. The moment I saw the frame and the, the moment I played her, I knew the changes were coming. Because there was no way they were going to leave her exactly how she was when they came out. Which is why I'm reshooting this video. <clears throat> like... I didn't want to invest too much until I saw what the hell she was doing. Oh, man. I will say this, by the way, too. Um, build up Azure Shards for this frame because her energy pool is fucking garbo. Okay, it is absolute trash. So, it, personally, I would highly recommend a couple of Crimson Shards. And, like, if you plan on playing Varuna, like, two Crimson Shards to give yourself about 20% additional more ability strength. Just to kind of increase the, the slash damage that you're doing and the status damage that you're doing in itself. And the uh, combination multiplier from her second ability. And then also put, like, three Azure Shards on her to give her more energy pool. Because, God almighty, does this frame need it. Giving her a base 525 or uh, 425 is stupid, is absolute trash. I know that she can build her own energy, but when you have a melee base frame, who in the hell wants to break out a rifle just to get more energy? You know, when you say in the dev stream, well, she's very much the melee base frame, but like it's hunt. Like it's hunt. To sustain the pack, enemies killed with melee attacks drop health orb. Self-sustainability with health. Okay. And enemies killed with a headshot drop energy orbs. Hence why she has a sniper rifle as her primary weapon. Okay. But 
when they talk about <laughs> when they talk about she's a melee based frame, why is that a thing? Just give her like Cora, you know, like 531 energy. That'd be a little better. <clears throat> just a little over 100 more than what she's got. It gives you a little bit of wiggle room. Okay, just saying. But anyway, things of Rosh, Rosh, Rock, Rocks. Sorry, I, I always fuck this up. So the passive obviously is status resistance. I wish that that was status immunity. Okay, I really do. That would make her survivability just that much better. Um, the, uh, excuse me, the actual ability itself, I find wholeheartedly fucking hilariously fun. Again, we're going into base damage, not damage multipliers. I still hate that. I can't express it enough how much I hate base damage because base damage doesn't scale. The only thing that slash does is it allows for bleeds, which is great. It's a DOT damage, but 420 slash from the base attack of the of, of the ability. Granted, the build I have, 52 fucking meters to be able to do this ability with a spread radius of 12.25 is awesome, but it's stacking five random status effects on top of that slash. So that slash is basically opening up for whatever randoms to get into the body. But if it's magnetic, what the fuck does that do? Nothing. <clears throat> Just putting it out there. The ability itself is very cool. I just wish that the damage was like a, you know, something better than just a base 420 slash. I think that in itself hurts it just a little bit. It's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm not mad at this whatsoever. I think the ability in itself is fun. I just hate base damage numbers. Considering it's just a second ability, I'm, I'm not mad at it. I'm really not. Okay. Like it's Hunt. This, like... The passive I hate. Okay, I wholeheartedly hate like it's hunt as far as it's passive. Don't even use it. You can build melees to stack to the 90% heavy efficiency that it's going to give you. Okay, so using this passive is just literally wasting your time. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Sorry, I have been under weather for like two weeks. Uh, but the ability, okay, like it's hunt. Uh, to sustain, like I said, you basically melee attack to get health orbs, and enemies killed with headshots get uh, drop uh, energy orbs. Increase the duration of Lycus Hunt by killing enemies affected by five or more status effects, which synergizes perfect, absolutely fucking perfect, with the second ability. I like when stuff plays off of each other, right? And and Lycus Hunt also plays off of the first ability, melee go invisible, melee go invisible. That is very much a forte kind of niche thing with, with what Varuna does. And in Ulfren's Descent. Now, again, the passive, I'm not a big fan of this because... Like, if your intent is to go into a mission so reckless that you just choose to die, you just choose death right from the get-go, I have a bit of a problem with that, okay? I really do. But then, again, a lot of people like to call the fourth ability of a Warframe their ultimate ability, right? Because it's typically an exalted weapon or some really overpowering weapon or damage, right? Herein lies my problem, okay? Herein lies my problem, if you're going to spend a hundred energy for an ability that has five charges, okay, five, why is there not a damage multiplier wrapped up into this rather than base damage and then damage per second? Yes, it is a lot of slash damage, but not on the steel path. It's not. So your weapons had better be modded for some damage types that are going to do some shit. Okay. Just putting that out there. Because I'm going to show you what I've been using compared to the setup that I've got here, okay? Um, but Ulfren guards Varuna. So basically it's this floating head that if you die, it dies for you and you stay going, okay? It's an interesting passive for somebody for some more survivability, but at the same time, considering you can get status resistance compared to an extra life. I mean, the whole point is to try and not die, so this is kind of like... If you're just so reckless in the game that you have problems dying, sure, this could be a great passive for you. Um, but status resistance or parkour velocity is so much better than this as far as a passive. The ability itself, Varuna drops on all fours and prepares five brutal charges that lock on to enemies. 
Ulfren, the most powerful wolf, leads the attack as Varuna dashes forward to her target. Uh, the pack deals increased damage target increased damage to targets and nearby enemies that are afflicted by status effects. Again, synergizing with the, the, the third ability, the second ability, and the first ability. So the whole fucking kit really does synergize well as far as the status effect. Lethal attacks double the damage of Varuna's remaining charges. So if you kill an enemy, it doubles down. Okay? It doubles down the damage that Varuna gets. That's the only bonus to this. So, whoops. So I can tell you this. First of all, like, I'm going to leave the Paragale on, but I'm going to put a different melee on here. Okay. And I'm going to do another thing, by the way. That's the look I've been going with. I don't like the heads. I just don't. I'm going to leave the Paragale on. I'm going to... Put the glaive on because that's going to come in very fucking handy. Okay? Very handy. But let's show you what the Paragill does really quickly. All right. This is level 190 corrupted. Do, 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 do. That is a pretty brutal son of a bitch, is it not? And you'll notice energy orbs, baby. Shit ton of energy orbs. The Paragale is a very good weapon. Okay, not even gonna front. This thing is a mean son of a bitch. Yeah. And you'll notice, by the way, when you're wielding it with Varuna, obviously the ammo pool increases for the weapon. So, yeah, headshots in quick succession increases the Paragale's, increase the Paragale's ammo efficiency when the Paragale is wielded by Varuna. Its ammo pool is increased. Its ammo pool is, its ammo pool increases. So it's a double down win when you're using it with Varuna. It does stick you to a very specific, um, usage but given that her third ability actually gives you energy orbs it's kind of important to have something that does damaging and deadly headshots but that's not what you gotta run you could use something as simple as that motherfucker i think at this point we all know the fenmore it's a badass son of a bitch so Let's see, herein lies the very specific playstyle of Varuna, okay? You come in here, now again, paused AI, I get it. So status resistance, right? Go invisible. Notice how the enemies start taking damage. That's something cool about using Glaive. It doesn't take away your invisibility until it makes impact. See, now, you can pop into the fourth. See, now we have a bunch of energy and health orbs. So she's like basically melee invisible, melee invisible. Keep the third ability running and then occasionally, you know, pop with the second ability. That's great. It really is. She does work. She works very well. Okay. But I got three builds for her. Now the base build is keeping her fourth ability. And you'll see me run a mod that I never fucking run. Equilibrium. Because the fact that you can get energy or health orbs off of this frame is highly important of why Equilibrium actually works 
because equilibrium is kind of like a weird mod that unless you're doing like level cap style play um equilibrium is not a highly used mod unless you're doing super high level content because you need to be able to pick up health and you need to be able to pick up energy both in that kind of vice versa realm so equilibrium isn't a highly used mod for normal gameplay at least like you never see me use this motherfucker but when it comes to veruna you can get both you can get health orbs from melee attacks and you can get energy orbs from headshots. So if all of a sudden you're trying to pop headshots and you need health, we'll just run over and go pick up the energy orbs. You get health. Boom. Have a nice day. Now, personally, I would highly recommend running Briefer Spite here. Okay, the reason being is that Briefer Spite on ability cast converts 150% of energy spent on shields or energy spent two shields while over shields are inactive running a low shield basically you just want to make sure that you are constantly getting your shields regen okay so if you're this is a perfect frame to aura forma because honestly i think physique is an absolute fucking joke in this here in that particular setup and the fact that i'm already running nair's hatred gives an additional 150 health anyway so you're going to get a little bit of health from that anyway and you just want some more duration out of it so because auger reach is really fucking good because notice you know let's see here about its duration uh yeah range range sorry uh duration range radius you definitely need range like she's she's a three-way setup kind of frame you need duration you need efficiency you need strength I mean, obviously, if you go for like an OP strength setup, you're going to get a shit ton of uh, slash. But again, it's still capped at whatever your ability strength is rather than having a multiplier. I, that, that, that's where it falls to me. The fourth ability, I think, should have a multiplier instead of damage per second. Like hit it for the second time and you get like a 3.34, you know, you know, uh, damage buff. You know? <laughs> so your initial hit is going to be like you know let's say 8400 points of slash damage well then your second hit is going to be multiplied by 3.34 well that's going to put you at like 26,000 or some shit that's much more steel path worthy you know and then multiply that damage again so you get five charges each charge just fucking multiplies insanely fucking high so you can aim at a, a trash mob unit and get your base damage and then aim at an eximus and pop a shit ton of fucking bleed DOT on that sub bitch. It just works, okay? It really fucking works. If if that damage per second were a multiplier, or if they added a multiplier in there, kept, uh, keep the damage per second, fine. 1,680 damage per second, that's great. Whatever. I mean, bleed's already the, a DOT anyway, so giving me just that much more damage per second is fine, man. 6.8 seconds at 1,680 per second with an open bleed proc, I'm fine with that. But give me, like, if I'm going to spend 100 fucking energy, I want that 100 energy to feel like it's it's a useful spending of 100 energy. So anyway, enough preaching on that. So I haven't done an Aura Forma yet. I will be, and Briefer Spite's going to be it. I promise you, Briefer Spite is going to be replacing Physique. Now, I decided to go with something a little bit more interesting because Varuna does have a tendency to want to die, Okay. Which is why I have Arcane Grace and Arcane Energize plus Equilibrium. It sounds insane, but it's a very self-sustainable setup. Now, you could turn around and put like... Um, <clears throat> like instead of Arcane Energize, which I wouldn't really recommend, but you could put like Multog Minute on there. You really could just to help stack up that damage more and more and more and more and more. So just the more kills you get, the more damage you do. It's, it, it works, especially doing the whole melee and viz, melee and viz, melee and viz status, melee and viz. I mean, it just, it really will build up pretty quickly. But I did a breach surge build. Less duration, basically the same ability strength, a um, little bit more health because I've got Gladiator Resolve on there because I want to increase um, critical chance per combo multiplier, but I was also running the Vanka Prime over the Glaive. So if you're running a Glaive Prime, this really won't do jack shit because you're only going to have a times two multiplier. So you're only going to get like 20% or 10%. Yeah, you're only going to get like an additional 10% crit. Not that great. If you're running something like the Vanka, the Vanka or the Cronin, either one will stack up a shit ton of combo really quickly. 
But again, this would be the briefer spite setup. Now the last one, a little bit different, right? <clears throat> Shield recharge coupled with, again, not running briefer spite on here, but actually running shepherd for a very specific reason, 300 health and 180 armor to my companion. This one is a less range build, but it's really not hurting that terribly bad. Okay, it's still 43 meters with a 12 point or a 10.15 spread radius. So it's only, you're only losing a couple of meters here on the spread. And, you know, you're losing a little bit on the range, but 43 fucking meters is a hell of a range. But I got war cry on here, which is why this is much more duration focused. Armor, speed, and an enemy speed decrease. Yeah, works. It actually works pretty fucking good. And slowing the enemies down gives you time to do what you want to do. And it increases your overall survivability just a little bit. Um, any one of these builds will work. But truth be told, if you're going to do this build in particular, I would highly recommend if you're not going to use Nyra's Hatred, I would definitely use Rolling Guard. Uh, because you've already got, you're already going to have an adaptation style passive running anyway. Um... So run Rolling Guard in case you just start getting fucked up. That way it gives you time. It gives you like three seconds to melee and get some health orbs and get the fuck out of there. And then put Break for Spite on there to keep your shields up and constantly keep from taking lethal damage. The Arcanes are really up to you. Whatever makes you feel comfortable, whatever makes you feel good, do what you gotta do. You do you. She's probably gonna be... Three or four Forma at the end of the day. Because I'm going to have an aura form in there. Sorry about that. Um, <clears throat> and probably a couple of Naramon. So. But I mean, overall, how is Varuna? Personally, not my play style. Um, I, with all the hype that came behind Varuna, right? You know, Varuna, the werewolf frame. She's not a werewolf frame, guys. She's, she's not transforming into anything. She's the wolf frame. <clears throat> the fact that they changed her to where I actually thought that the shoulders were going to even be even bigger than what they were, and they're not, but they're still obtrusive to my view, especially since the uh, second passive is the one on the right fucking shoulder. So it's literally this flashing head right when I'm trying to side in with something like the Fenmore. Um, it's a little fucking annoying, so I took those off. But I wish, like, if you could take shoulders off, let, let me go ahead and take the hips off, too, because it looks really stupid now that I've got these two heads on my hips. Just saying. It, I mean, doesn't it? Does it does that not look a little weird? Having these two wolf heads on the side, but nothing on the shoulders? I just think that's strange. Like, I think that should be, like, Varuna left armor, Varuna right armor, instead of just shoulders. Um, <laughs> Just saying, it looks funny. But I like what she does. I really do. Um, I think the Paragale is a very good weapon for her, um, especially using it with her. Using it with other frames, it's not so great. Because, man, if you're not a good headshotter like me, I'm not a great headshotter. I'm really not. Um, you are going to be spending a metric fuck ton of time reloading the weapon. And that's going to put you in a position of dying unless you're running a tank frame. I'm terrible at headshots. I can own that shit, okay? I've got, I've got piss poor vision, and it is what it is. So... But at least with something like, you know, the Fenmore, it's a little bit more forgiving. Something like the Paragale is not so forgiving. <clears throat> but it's a really, really punchy son of a bitch. So, I mean, overall, what do I think about Varuna and the Paragale and the Seraphang? I think Varuna has got a lot of potential, and I'm actually waiting to see if there's even more that they're going to do, because they're saying there's more coming. Which is why I'm still, why I'm showing the builds that I have without the Aura Forma, without really doing much other than a couple of subsumes to kind of test out a couple of different ways to do things you know like putting breach surge on her blind the fucking enemies nearby within your range gives you more time to do your attacks that way if you don't hit stealth quick enough they're not shooting at you it's good stuff it's just another way to kind of self-sustain and keep yourself in a good spot Doing War Cry, increase your survivability and increase your, your overall speed so you don't have to use the first passive, right? So that way you can stay on the status resistance passive. It's just another level of, you know, survivability. I don't have to get away from the, the adaptive style passive and 
go to a parkour passive. I can have both. I can invest both worlds by running Warcry. So, I mean, it's just a couple of test builds, but they work. I've already tested them on the Steel Path. They're not amazing, but they work. But that's why I'm not dumping a bunch of farming yet. I really, 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 like, I think there's more that they can do with this frame. I really do. With all the hype and everything that was built up behind it, I, for God's sakes, man, the fucking Seraphang is a huge bust for me. I think it's total garbage. Um, it's pure mastery fodder, but thank God it's easy to farm. Um, the Paragale, absolute win. Even with the reload time, even if you're a piss poor aim like me, absolute fucking win. It's powerful as shit. I like the fact that it's a burst rifle. I really do. Although the, the magazine size is amazing, that's fine. I don't even care. It's very powerful. And the fact that you stick Shred or Prime Shred on there and the amount of punch that you get out of that gun literally just takes out a row of five level 190 guy or 190 people with like two bursts. Brr, brr, fucking five 190s are down. It's good stuff. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's that's where I'm at with Varuna. I'm waiting to see what further changes they do with Varuna and then kind of go from there because I think there's just so much more they can do with her given the hype that they've put into this. Like, the community begged and pleaded for a werewolf frame, and then they got a half a wolf frame that's got floating fucking heads that are constantly chasing her. I don't know. It's interesting. It's very interesting. So, folks, I want to thank you very much for watching. Um, again, this isn't a full bag on. It's really not. It's not It's not like a full bashing of Varuna. I like Varuna. I like the potential that Varuna's got. I like kind of the interesting things that, that you know, the whole switching, the, the active switching of passives plus having abilities. It's very Lavos-like, and I really like Lavos. I just think that, the, you know, the whole... Here, you get one sacrificial lamb head, and then... Heavy attack efficiency that if I really want, I can just build for it. But you give me a heavy blade. It's like a thousand different fucking... Not a thousand, but... It's like a bunch of different melees in this game. That I could just throw heavy attack efficiency mods on there and run um, Naramon, I think. <coughs> and just get a ton of heavy attack efficiency. These two passives are a win. This ability is a win. This ability is kind of like... It needs just a little bit more, man. I like, I know they just buffed it, but it needs a little bit more because it's just, it's not enough to like, just blow your mind. Right. So anyway, I think she's good. I think the rifle's good. I think the melee is garbage. <laughs> so folks, I want to thank you very much for watching. As always, we will catch you in the next one.